Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, A Disturbing Mammoth, The Kindly Ones by Jonathan Littell. So this is a book I read for my ongoing Disturbing Books project where I'm reading Disturbing Books that have been recommended to me by viewers. This one came up a few times, a few different people recommended this, and I can see why. It is absolutely horrifying um, and really genuinely disturbing at times as well, and also huge. And I think its its size is kind of one of the things that makes this book as powerful as it, as it is, and I'll, I'll come back to that later on in this video. Um, so... What is this book? So, so it's a, a book unlike most of the books I read. So A, it's massive and I, I tend to read shorter books. Um, but also it's a, you know, it's a work of literature. So this is a, a, a French book, originally published in, in French, won the Prix Goncourt in France, which is like the French equivalent of the Booker Prize. So it's a, you know, a, a bona fide work of literature, which is very different from the kind of thing I normally read. But it's also incredibly readable. So despite the fact that it's nearly a thousand pages long, I didn't find myself at any point wanted to give up on this book. I think often with you know really long books, you feel the weight of all the pages you haven't read yet and, and you think to yourself, do I really want to keep going, particularly with a book that's as, as troubling as this one. Um, but I found with this, I just I just wanted to keep reading. It did take me a while to read it. So it, read, it took me about three weeks to read. But partly that was because it's physically so large that I couldn't take it with me on my on my daily commute. Um, so I did put it down a few times during those three weeks and, and read other things. So what's it about? So this is a book about the Second World War. Um, it's written from the perspective of an SS officer who is looking back on the war and the part he played in the war. And it's largely about the, the Eastern Front and uh, the death camps, so about the Holocaust. Um, and there's a section right at the start of the book where the character works out mathematically how many people died per minute during those, you know, as a result of those two things, the, the battle on the Eastern Front um, and, uh, and the death camps. And it's just, you know, that right at the start of the book is absolutely horrifying but kind of clinical it's it, it you, you feel quite detached just reading those numbers at the start of the book but what you then have is hundreds and hundreds of pages of that stuff happening of you witnessing those atrocities all those you know thousands millions of deaths and it as I said you know the, the, the size of this book is part of the point it's kind of that repetition of horror of the terrible, terrible things that makes this book so powerful. It's a book that you find yourself kind of immersed in because it takes a while to read. You end up living with this book in in your mind, you know, when you go to bed at night over, you know, multiple nights. And that, I think, really, really gives the book, you know, more power than it would have had if it was shorter. I think some books, um, some books feel like they are long accidentally, um, like the you know the the writer just ran away with themselves and wasn't reined in by their editor. This book you know it feels like the size is very very deliberate, um, and it, as I say, it, it really does give it some power. Um, so yeah, it's it's really about Max, this guy, and his view on the things that are happening around him, um, and he's a fascinating character. If I if I was to compare this book to two books, I would say. It's like a cross between Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov um, and The Painted Bird by Jerzy Kaczynski. So it's like Lolita because it has that central narrator who is self-deluded, who is constantly trying to justify their own actions and, and you know their part in, in horrible acts. Um, but it's also like The Painted Bird. So The Painted Bird, a less well-known book, than Lolita and I think it was a book that was quite famous when it first came out but it's kind of faded from from the public mind a bit so The Painted Bird again is a book about the Second World War and it's about a young boy traveling across a kind of slightly fantastical war-torn Europe witnessing you know hor horrible events as he goes and this you know book has that same kind of slightly dreamlike at times feeling to it in that the things you are seeing are just so horrific that you can't imagine that they could be real um and it's just relentless in that brutality again as well it just you know again and again and again you get horrible things 
happening and you are forced to, to witness them. Um, so it definitely felt to me, it definitely reminded me of the painted bird as a result of that. But as I say, with this, everything you see is filtered through the eyes and the consciousness of, of Max as a central character. And he is someone who is who is constantly, you know, he knows at the start of the book that what is happening is, is wrong. Uh, and he even to an extent opposes it at the start of the book. Um, and yet he goes along with it. And I think that's a, a fascinating way of, you know, kind of almost telling the story of what happened in, in Germany in the 30s and, and, you know, the rise to power of, of the Nazis. The fact that people did, did just, you know, did just go along with it. They, they, they let themselves be taken in by the propaganda and things like that. And whilst, you know, they knew that these things weren't right, there was always some kind of justification, some kind of spin that was put on things that meant that ordinary people did come to accept, accept some of the horrible, you know, atrocities that were being committed in their names. Um, and that is definitely, you know, I think for me, one of the, you know, the main message of this book really is about the fact that ordinary people can do horrific, terrible things in you know in certain circumstances and that makes it a really really powerful read it's it's really compelling and whilst it's not you know in in a way this is a book that doesn't have a plot it's just one thing happening after another like a chronological um depiction of the events of of the second world war through you know through the eyes of one person um so there's no plot and yet it's gripping and let i couldn't you know i couldn't stop turning the pages i wanted to find out how it all ended up and what happened to, to Max. Um, so it's a, a fascinating and, and very readable book um, because of that. It's much more, it's much easier to read than I would have expected. The language is, you know, relatively simple. Um, so I didn't feel myself bogged down by um, by the language in the way that I sometimes am with, you know, quite on quite literary books. I don't know how much of that is Jonathan Littell and how much of that is, is the translator. Um, but it was a, a, you know, a book that I found, despite the, the horrible stuff in it, in terms of the actual like, mechanics, if you like, of reading it, it was, it was relatively easy to read. Um, but absolutely horrific. You know, just again and again and again, absolutely horrific. And it, I think it was, you know, some people have, have criticised it. So it was very well received in France, I believe. But when it was first published in um, in English-speaking countries, I think, in you know, in America and, and uh, the US, some critics, you know, thought it was really good. But some critics criticised it for its just relentless brutality. But I don't think, you know, I think if you're writing a book about the Holocaust and it's not relentlessly brutal... You're probably not. You're probably not doing your job. Um, we need to be reminded of the horrific things that, that, as I say, ordinary people can end up doing. Um, because if we don't, if we if we don't remind ourselves of that, then you know it can happen again. We're seeing, um, you know, right wing ideologies and things like that. You know, growing in some countries around the world over the last kind of ten years or so, in particular. Um, and you know scapegoating of of you know particular minority groups and things like that and that is a, a terrible thing and, and it's very easy to see how um, you know this this book shows you how those things can just you know just spiral just get worse and worse and worse um, and how people can just fool themselves into thinking that there are logical you know scientific reasons there there are lots of sections of this book where you get characters who are you know kind of in max's sphere if you like discussing how you know what is going on is the right thing to do why there are you know scientific or medical reasons or whatever why it's right to exterminate people um which is you know mind-bogglingly horrible but but it's really convincingly done in this book and i, I think it, it's a book that feels like it was meticulously researched um and that you know that that comes through it makes it convincing and realistic um it almost feels like a like a history book at times um and I, and i suppose that's you know that that's the point of it. it it's trying to it's trying to remind us of history but in a in a way that is easy to not easy to take in in a way that you, you want to keep reading i can't imagine reading and and you know a thousand page non fiction book about the holocaust um, it's just, it's just not something I would, um, I, w I would choose to do. I don't think. 
but th- but this book because of its narrative strengths and because of the, the fascination that I you know you develop as a reader with Max as a character it pulls you through that and, and makes you witness to all those terrible things and and reminds you of you know the, the horrible things that have happened in our collective history um, and I think it's a really important book because of that. So I hope you found that interesting. This was, I think, a rambly review, even by my standard. So apologies for that. But this is a a difficult book to talk about and difficult book to process. Um, I'm still, I finished it a few days ago and I'm still getting my head around it to an extent, I think. Um, So yeah, um, if you've read it, let me know in the comments your thoughts on it. I do recommend it if you've got the stomach for it. Um, And as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.